Have you ever been in a situation where you walked in to a room and said, I can't believe this is my life? That was me every day. Hey friends, Cypress here. So I wanted to talk about uh, what I'm about to post. Um, so I like, I don't know how to start this. Um, back in 2017, 16, 17, 18, 2017, I think, I worked um, at a YouTube channel. <laughs> um, it was a children's entertainment channel. And uh, the channel that I started on was called Princess Pickles. It, again, it was a child's entertainment channel. Um, if you've ever heard of Cookie Swirl C, we were very much like her. Uh, we really focused on the content that she put out. A few other channels as well. Um, but she was the main one that we focused on and she is still around. Princess Pickles is not still around. So if you are interested in the kind of content that we did and um, you want to see, you know, the popularity that, that it, it could reach, Cookie Swirl C is the perfect example of that. Um, there were other, as I said, there were other channels that we focused on. I don't want this to be dramatized. Um, there is no scoop, there is no tea, there is no drama. If you are thinking of Elsa Gate, this is not the kind of channel that was involved in that sort of thing. So there's not going to be any heavy, oh my gosh, you know, ooh, what was that? It is what it is. So I just wanted to share because have you ever been in a situation where you walked in to a room and said, I can't believe this is my life. That was me every day. Um, you know, I've always heard that thing where your memories, every time you remember it, your brain actually fills in parts. So it's not always the truth of that moment. But I wanted to have an introduction to this and I kept stopping myself of talking about this um, for two reasons. One reason, I was scared of any sort of um, legal backlash. Uh, again, I am not saying anything that is going to incriminate someone. Um, I'm not going to talk about my boss. Um, really, there was, again, there was no issues. I left because the position just disappeared. Um, it's just natural, the course of things. So, you know, there's no huge drama, but at the same time, I signed an NDA that I wasn't going to talk about what I did. That NDA has since ended, um, but I still respect my coworkers and my employer, um, even though I don't work there anymore. Uh, I, I don't want to create any sort of discomfort. Not that I think that this video is going to be seen by many people, but if it were, I don't want to cause any sort of just drama, just tea. There, it isn't there. But at the same time, I personally really enjoy hearing about behind the scenes stuff. So people who, you know, why they left BuzzFeed, you know, hearing about, you know, what they've done. And even the people who used to work at um, Disney, you know, uh, fun fact, I actually auditioned to be a Disney princess character um, at Walt Disney World. Um, I was too short, unfortunately. That is not something that you can change. So I had to give up that dream, but um, <laughs> you know, it's always fun to hear about the other lifestyle. Um, and I got to live the life of a YouTuber for a year and a half. And it was the most amazing, frustrating, freeing, but constricting position. It was so contradictory to itself. Um, and that might have been a little bit because of 
you know, the fact that I didn't own the, the, the channel, but also that I was stuck in a genre. So we were children's entertainment. Um, so that meant toy unboxing, um, small crafts we got into, and a little bit of story time, play time with the characters of like the little toys. But we really didn't get into that um, until I had started working there. So a lot of it was this new product came out. We would, you know, have an intro of like, you know, hey, whatever, um, and then then start opening it up and kind of creating a story with the toy. And that was it. The videos were 10 minutes. Um, and so it was it was fairly easy to do. So um, so going back to the start, I was working in a very serious technical job uh, where we had software dealing with um, compliance for, uh, again, I'm not trying to dox where I used to work, <laughs> but um, yeah, compliance, uh, you know, for we assisted companies to call their clients and customers and prospects um, in a way that was in accordance with the law. Um, I had everything laid out to have a very professional career as a client success manager. I was good at the job. I was exceeding very well and I made known that I wanted to be the senior C uh, CSM, but I wasn't happy. It reminds me a lot of, uh, if you've ever seen the Netflix series, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Was that a Netflix original? I don't remember. But um, my crazy ex-girlfriend or crazy ex-girlfriend, yeah, uh, Rachel Bloom, um, where she was like this really awesome lawyer and she was just suicidal. Um, kind of where I was. Uh, I was just in a dark place and uh, there was no light. I um, really hadn't had a chance to explore voiceover the way I wanted. Uh, I kind of figured out that to do what I wanted to do, I'd have to relocate across the country. And I'm very close with my family, obviously. So um, that was heartbreaking because I, was, I wasn't going to do that and I am not going to do that. So I was just coming to terms with the fact that voiceover was never going to be the full-time career that I wanted it to be. And sitting in that cubicle space, dealing with high stress, you know, I, I would, you know, have, I, I was promoted originally, I would have days where I would wake up at three o'clock in the morning because I was on call. Um, I did get out of that, but then I was, you know, the clients had my number or I, I had a work cell phone, but you know, they, they could call me anytime they had an issue. And so even during holidays, I was always on edge and it just, it felt like a dark hole. It felt like, is this really what life is? There was no deeper meaning. Um, and I could get into that a little bit more, but I won't. <laughs> um, so I just started looking around. I don't even know what I was looking for. Um, I wanted to get into the enta entertainment industry any, any way that I could. I thought maybe I could just be a receptionist at Turner Broadcasting Studio just to get in there. Um, I had also just come from um, Connecticut School of Broadcasting, shout out. Um, again, I was like the tour guide there, secretary, you know, I, I, I was aware of many hats. Um, but the position that actually they closed now in my location, um, they just, they didn't find the success that they needed. So I couldn't get the promotion that I was aiming for. I wanted to be administration and run that, but that position was being taken care of by the director. Um, and unfortunately, they, there was no health insurance and they were paying me a very low rate. So I just couldn't financially stay there. I loved it there. I felt such creative freedom there, but I couldn't realistically stay. So I had to leave and I had to go where the money was. Um, and that crushed my soul a little, you know. Um, it's, it's just a 
it's such a hard thing when people say, you know, do what you love and the money will follow. I've yet to see that happen. Um, I, I have found a nice alternative, but when people say, what's your dream job or what did you want to be when you were young and that kind of stuff, I am not doing that right now. Um, I'm sort of living that life. I am doing daily, uh, or not daily, but regular um, voiceover gigs not enough to sustain um, my lifestyle, so therefore I'm not a full-time voiceover actress. But I do voiceover, I am a professional voiceover. I, I've paid down my credit, I love saying that. I've paid down my credit card completely um, via voiceover entirely. I bought a Mac, you know, entirely off of those funds. So I make enough, it's just not that regular to ha be my full-time income. Um, so, you know, and, and then of course, um, my dream is to be an entertainer. I've always wanted to entertain people, period. Didn't care what I did. I just wanted to entertain. And then I found out what voice acting was and I was like, this is amazing. So, but in kind of wrapped into there, that's why I, I wanted to jump back on to this channel. And of course I still have tier two, which I adore and I know I need to post more. So, <laughs> but it's just... It's difficult, you know, to, to find that happy medium where you don't have to stress about finances. You aren't living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. Um, there is a, a sort, you know, money can't buy you happiness, but the people who say that usually don't have money problems. You never hear someone in poverty saying money can't hate, buy you happiness unless they've reached such a nirvana state. You know, they're in, in peace and mindfulness and they don't mind not having a home. When you look at that pyramid of psychology um, where, you know, you need food and shelter and clothing and those are your base levels. And when you independently cannot guarantee those pieces, you just feel like a failure, or at least I did. And so I was living this, um, this job that was great on paper, made me look like a healthy adult, um, but it just wasn't happy. And so I randomly found an ad on Craigslist <laughs> for a content creator. For a YouTube channel. Um, it sounded actually a lot like doing voiceover, um, but it was for YouTube. So I said, why not? And I applied. And it took almost a month talking back to back, but I ended up getting it. The funny thing is, I remember this was, I got hired in May and I live in Georgia, so southern heat, you know, we were like in, in summer, I know June technically, whatever, but um, I remember sitting in my car, I turned off the car so that the, you know, I, the person that was interviewing me, my future boss, um, wouldn't hear the car engine, um, but I was also away from the building so that my current employer wouldn't know that I was taking a phone call in my car. So I was just sweating <laughs> buckets, um, just sitting there talking about, oh yeah, I watched those 10 random children's channels. I think those are fun. I could definitely do that. And um, so it was so weird to be like, okay, you know, so then I went, I met them at a Starbucks because the, um, the studio that they were booking hadn't opened yet. So they hadn't actually moved in yet. So just a random thing of my first day of work, I drove to my boss's personal home. Now granted, they were very, or, and they still are very affluent. So it wasn't like I was driving in, you know, really sketchy area, you know, it was, it was very luxurious <laughs> where they live. Um, they now live in Florida, so I, uh, I'm fine talking about where they live because they don't, they don't live there anymore. Um, but I walked in and there's like a Barbie leg hanging off the chandelier and <laughs> we're just sitting at this table, these two lovely ladies, um, who are my coworkers. 
and um, my boss was out buying the product that we were going to film that day. Uh, we go upstairs to an additional like playroom, I guess you could say. It was it was set up um, to be you know recording, um, but it was just extra toys and stuff in there. I watched her and she'd say, okay, you know, you're going to hit record and then you're going to wait a second and then you're going to do this and you're going to do this or whatever. Um, there was never face cam. It was always just our hands, which you'll see in a video. And um, so I watched her do one video and then she said, okay, let me know if you have any questions. And she left. <laughs> and I was up there with um a barbie i was opening up a barbie's like the vet one where she had like she there was like a little cow and a little sheep um and then like you know like the bandages you could put on them and like give them like the shots and stuff yeah that was my first video my first episode i wish i had saved it um i remember being so nervous i could not remember the sound that a cow made. And I had just met my coworkers 30 minutes ago, so I couldn't go downstairs and say, hey, what sound does a cow make? I guess because I, oh, that's what it was. I left my purse downstairs, so I didn't have my personal effects upstairs. It was me with my boss's phone. It was an extra phone. She bought an iPhone to record these uh, videos on, and, um, I didn't have anything and I was paranoid about going downstairs to ask a question and look like I didn't know what I was doing. So I literally said to the editor, I am so sorry. I don't know what sound a cow makes. <laughs> and so I just had to go. Ugh. And I did. I made that noise. It was like, oh, this little cow. <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard to think of the word moo, <laughs> but I made a weird noise. And the funniest thing is I was expecting the editor. She's amazing. I'm still friends with her. Um, I was expecting her to put in the sound of a cow, but either she thought it was funny or she thought it was okay. She kept it. So this little cow is going, to. Uh. <laughs> and again, I wish I had that one to show you. There, there were so many moments that were just so funny to be in that situation. And you kind of have to laugh, you know. Um, but I'm an adult that I, I play. We still play with Legos, you know. It's, I, I mean, you just have to have that kind of personality to run those shows or those videos, those channels. I know a lot of people are like, oh, man, those people, they must be crazy. No, they just have the spirit of a child. And if I could do it and sustain it, I probably would jump back into it because it was so fun. There were frustrating moments because again, I had to focus so much on the trends, on the hashtags. So there was a lot of intricate details in the behind the scenes that I had to do. So like that, when, you know, Elsa, you had, you just had to. Now I actually came in where it was a really awkward stage. Um, so we didn't actually do a lot of uh, like frozen stuff. But if there was a toy or like when fidget spinners came out, um, I had to do a fidget spinner episode. And, uh, you know, it's just things like that where you, you can't just, I love, and you could, this is how um, Cookies for LC started. She really loves horses and she liked toys. So she started with My Little Ponies. And so she just made little videos of My Little Ponies playing. And then it kind of caught, kicked off. Um, and then she went into the unboxing trend. And that's really where the success came. And so we did the same thing. Um, but you have to realize that every video cost almost $60. Uh, you could get away with some that were like maybe $20, you know, especially if you had some like extra Barbies, you didn't have to buy that Barbie. But every video, there was cost to it. And they made it back. They did. But to start a channel like that, you need a lot of expendable income. And you have to be picked up by the algorithm. And right now, the way things are because of how the, the COPPA... Um, you know, everything like that, but in, um, 2018, I think it was, um, that really changed the game for children's shell, uh, YouTube. And now 90%, or at least that's, that's the fear was 90% of their income was now going to be taken away because of the sponsorships and everything. Um, that's when I left. So I don't know exactly how it is right now anymore. 
Um, but I, it's not something that I could do because it just, or like at that, you know, to be successful in that way just would not be realistic for me. Um, you really need to have that income to jump into it. And a lot of people don't realize that it's it uh, for that specifically the other videos you know vlogs when you go out you know what even you know yeah you want to taste stuff mukbangs those can't be cheap you spend so much money on food you know um video gaming and stuff i think that's the easiest thing to jump into only because you bought the game spe you know specifically or s whatever because you like playing video games or you already have a video game a lot of stuff like on steam or whatever you can get for cheap on sale or for free um and so you can kind of jump on the bandwagon that way um tier two we kind of specifically said we didn't want to try to do super trending stuff unless we were genuinely interested um we might back up and eat those words uh, just to see if we can grow the channel, but we also want to stick true to who we are. Um, and with gaming, because like that, that is one of the easiest ones to jump into in that there's not that much setup that you need. The game is already created, so you just add your commentary and then you have your video. But with a lot of these other things, you need to buy the product to show it off, makeup and that sort of thing. Like you need to invest and then you can you can show it off. Uh, cooking channels and stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on the back end that a lot of people are like, well, how do I get into it? And people are like, just do it. And that's kind of why I started filming this video. I'm like, I could have tried to go back to my receipts, my, my resume, um, to get like all of the details and everything. But you do at some point just need to jump into it. It's never going to be perfect. But you also need to be prepared. And more so in a way that people don't really necessarily consider. Yeah, you know, you need good audio, good lighting, good sound. Um, that's what audio is. Um, but... <laughs> quality of video um but you know and obviously you can always kind of upgrade you know but um i don't know there's always there's always that starting point but there's always that initial expense and i think that happens with everything people always ask you know i want to get into voiceover how can i get into voiceover you need coaching i don't care if you have the silkiest smooth voice you need to know how to use it and people think they know how to use it because they think, oh, well, you're just reading. Um, but that's going to be very dry unless you are exactly what they're looking for. You know, like it's such a niche thing to be untrained voiceover. Some people do it. Some people are, are magical with it where, you know, kind of like with acting. They are, you know, they, they were found in a coffee shop or whatever. I mean, wasn't it Chris Pratt was homeless in Hawaii? And he just got like booked for a role. I don't, I can't even remember his exact story, but it's like a fairy tale. That doesn't happen for everybody. Um, and especially with voiceover, it's not going to happen unless you already know people in the gig. The people who have those stories either have a friend or a family member who was already in the entertainment business. Very rarely are you going to hear about someone who got picked up at age six or 18 um, just randomly off the street. You need that demo, and that demo is going to cost $1,200. You can get one cheaper, but it might sound cheaper. You get what you pay for. And then, of course, no respectable uh, demo producer is going to do that to you um, without a few weeks of training. So that's between $75 to $200 a session. Um, I've done both. Well, maybe not 200, maybe that's a little bit, whatever, but, um, yeah. So you spend six to $800 on your training, you know, for six to eight weeks, then you spend $1,200 on your demo. That's how you get started, you know? So people don't think about the expense that goes into it. I went off on a weird ass tangent, but maybe that's what this channel is going to be. I don't know. Um, I just wanted to kind of get that off my chest because, that's important and no one really talks about that. And I just realized you see Skidoo, Skidoo, yeah, Skidoo behind me. Um, yeah, this is my studio uh, for voiceover, but um, we also um, have some of our <laughs> larger um, costumes in here. So <laughs> I think I'm going to make another video 
about the behind the scenes um, probably after I do the main bulk. So what's going to happen is at some point I'm going to do reaction videos. I'm sorry, I have hair on me. I don't know where it came from. Well, I do. We have six cats. Um, um, I'm going to do reaction videos because at first I was going to just post the videos, but I didn't want to be caught in YouTube's algorithm thinking that I was a children's channel. Now, again, I don't, I'm not adult. Your child can watch me. Um, I do a lot of you know, like that children's entertainment, like I do a lot of mobile app games where I talk like a fun little voice. Like, so of course I'm going to do stuff that's aimed at children, but that doesn't mean that this video and this channel is for children. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there. And so that's also why I wanted to do a reaction because I don't know that that's ever actually been done before. You know, you see um, face reveals. Um, I'm thinking of actually uh, Next Gen, who I unironically watch. You know, I, I do watch a lot of unboxing stuff, or I used to. I kind of fell out of it, but um, I used to watch them. Um, nostalgia, but then also because it's interesting. I like buying those toys, those, you know, blind boxes and opening them unironically. I have them all over my house. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't know. It's just not, that's not the channel that this can be. But that's also a part of my life that I adore and I miss terribly. And it's so weird to say how much you miss something that was so random and I'm getting for clamped and I apologize. But, um, People thought I was crazy when I when people asked me what I did and I just said I was a content creator and then they'd ask again I'd be like I do children's entertainment and then they're like what the hell does that mean and I'm like it's a YouTube channel and then they're like what and I'm like I play with toys for a living <laughs> um, and um, I never wanted to leave it but I had to but what happened was the channel evolved so going back to the history the channel was called Princess Pickles, and my boss, the mother of two girls who had their main channel, which was featuring the girls, um, she had this, she ran this channel herself, unboxing toys, and she was Princess Pickles. And uh, when I came on, I became Pickleina, the pickle fairy. Just kind of jumped right into it. Day one, they we didn't even know, we were just like, you should be something, say something like, you know, Princess Pickles you know, is in the pickle patch um, because she was going to kind of wean her way out of it because she needed to spend more time with the main channel, but the side channel was doing really well as well. And that's why I was hired. So I completely took over it. Um, we never really did that kind of explaining who it was. Um, we had different hands. So some people were like, you're not Princess Pickles. And I, and I never said I was, I always said I was Pickleina, but of course these are very young audience members. So they still thought that I was the mother of the children, even though that's really funny, um, because she was African American and I am, um, ivory literally when I go to the store, I buy ivory makeup. Um, and so it was really funny to people be like, oh yeah, she's the mom. And I'm like, not anymore. I'm a different person, but it's okay. Um, so that was really funny. But anyway, so yeah, I got to do my nails every week. I did a different color, but that was also really funny um, because I had, I was almost like a hand model, you know, and it's really funny now because I actually have a, a costuming um, incident. Um, so I have a scar um, and this happened afterwards. This happened in 2019. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I remember getting it and I was like, oh, <laughs> my hand modeling career is over now, <laughs> especially while it was healing. There was this big bandage on it. And I was like, I don't know how I would have gotten through this because I even, even like, um, you know, like biting my nails, like I completely had to stop that. Like I literally treated myself like I was a hand model because you need nice hands when you're filming your hands doing these crafts and stuff. And that's also why I want to get into it. Maybe my manicure will start looking okay. But we were, you know, we were copying the trends. So I was living in a box and I got to be as creative as I could in this tiny box. Um, we then started, um, a another channel called Dolly Pop. That was my baby. 
Um, that happened almost as a joke, but I was like, what if I played with the Barbies? I don't know. So I ended up doing um, videos of Barbies because we watched, um, oh my gosh, what was it? Somebody's World, Gracie's World. Um, and she did Barbies and they talked and everything with like a green screen. So I started doing that with uh, random Barbie dolls. Um, and it started as a one-off, um, this Barbie called Piper, uh, who I, I kept when I left, I took her. <laughs> um, she was a dog walker, so she was one of those unboxing. And I made a story and it was like a, a love story that was based on 101 Dalmatians where like the dogs could talk and then the humans met and like, so it was a double love story. Um, then they were gonna go on a date um, so she was getting her hair done. Those those hair people, the salon, I, I incorporated that story into it. Anyway, it became this thing. And um, eventually that became more popular, or at least it was easier, it was cheaper to do. Um, so we stopped doing unboxing, and I did Dolly Pop. And then... Um, it started as a joke, but we were like, why don't we do, uh, I, I play Barbies pretending that they're the girls, the main girls of these ch this channel. And uh, that went over well, and we were like, yeah, let's do that. So I spent a week prepping this big set, and um, that, uh, that became Naya and Ellie Doll Show. I didn't want to say that because those are the names of the girls, but I want to share those with you. Um, right now the channel is still up. Um, I don't know how much longer it would be up because it got switched over again um, to the main people. And that's again, roundabout how I left. So I had been doing, um, unboxing and then we started doing crafts and I was doing these Barbie like soap operas for itch, toddlers basically is what we called it um, and then we we made Ned's which is short for the Nine Ellie doll show um, and so Dolly Pop um, that was 100% me that was not scripted I I wrote down a synopsis of what I wanted the video to be about and then I did it so they would stand there and you could see my hands I'm pretty sure yeah I, I didn't do the stop motion on this one um, so they would move and nothing was scripted it was all improv again I knew where I wanted to go I knew what the plot for that episode was going to be and I knew which different like scenes and stuff um, but I just went in there and, and winged it and I adored those characters I still do um, I still think about them I still think about bringing them back in some fashion. Um, but that's another story for another day. But then um, Ned's happened. And so I was doing Dolly Pop and Ned's. Was that a separate channel? Why can't I remember now? Maybe Dolly Pop was its own channel. I think it was its own channel. Um, that got taken away from me. I say that. I know it sounds so childish. That really was the first time that I felt like I was a content creator, like I was an artist, like I was living and breathing my art. And again, I know it's so stupid to be like, I was playing with Barbies, you know, I was making up, you know, this one's shy and she doesn't want to tell this guy, he, you know, she likes hair or whatever. I actually explained what an introvert was to children because I'm tired of playing Monopoly with my friends. Um, <laughs> so it was just like, it was true stories aimed at children. It was 100% family friendly, you know, but it wasn't, I never really talked down to the children. It wasn't stupid just for the sake of it, of the trending, you know, whatever. I implemented plot, um, but that wasn't doing well and that was taking too much of my time. So then I focused solely on Ned's um, and that, that was a masterpiece in the fact of kind of like stop motion the what went into it I don't think any other channel has done 
Um, you'll see about a year ago, I made a how to do, uh, how to do one of these videos, um, where I, again, it was, it actually w worked better on an iPhone than it would on like a camera because you can stop it. Like the small clips were actually easier. Um, but every movement I would move it and then go back into it. But, um, but then they would, I would move them like when they could be stationary. This is Piper. She is the owner of Bluebell, who I also, I kind of custom painted. And uh, she was the love interest of Michael, who was the owner of Max, who was um, Bluebell's love interest. Um, there was some behind the scenes stuff. So Michael was taken by a different doll channel uh, when Dolly Pop ended. Um, but I hid Piper. <laughs> and then when I left, um, it was kind of agreed that I could steal her uh, because they weren't going to use her. And um, this doll means so much to me and it's so stupid. Um, but she represents what I could never do. I always wanted to be an entertainer. And for the briefest of moments, I had that. I always get so defensive when I see YouTubers making fun of these children channels because I know what goes on and um, you just don't understand. <laughs> Says you could sense I was uh, upset. This is my dog, Cecily. Anyway, so she's gonna keep me company. Um, but yeah, so I'm um, sorry I went off on a tangent. It was really cool because she would move and like talk like this and then I would pause it and she'd move and she'd be like, ah, ha, 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 and then she'd go back. Um, and that was so time consuming, but it was so fulfilling to be like, look what you can make these dolls do. We actually, that's why we, um, she, this is not her original body. We had to get, um, posable Barbies. Those were a game changer. It was amazing. I hated recording with the little Chelsea dolls because they wouldn't bend. Um, but these dolls, they are so articulated. Um, and they really, they could do everything. So I actually did, um, I was debating, um, doing my own stuff on my voiceover channel. Um, because this is, um, the kind of matches the hair of my channel over there. Um, so this is essentially me. <laughs> um, I know I don't look like her, but, um, but I never went ahead and did that. Uh, this is actually, uh, the yarn hair. If you're ever interested, I might actually do a tutorial on that. I was going to, but I never did, but, uh, it's literally, it's yarn and then you untwine it and, um, straighten it with a, a hair straightener as long as you're safe because you can totally uh, <laughs> melt off the stuff but it is so smooth and uh it's a different texture but it's just super cool anyway so um it was really cool to do that content um and so we were aiming then um just doing neds and i was able to get it away from just the trending stuff of like uh, morning routines <laughs> if you've ever watched a child's youtube channel morning routines were it brushing your teeth night and day um and we kind of were getting away from that and putting in plot um and so then it went it was scripted um it had to be scripted because the girls um and then later the mother and then also actually the father eventually um started doing their own voices as well and so um that was really cool so at first uh the first season i did all of the voices except for the main family um, because again there it was based on a real family um and it was a love-hate relationship because of the standing and the recording um the other the unboxing videos would take maybe between 30 minutes to an hour um and then it would be edited down to like 10 minutes I would do two videos in a day. I only, so I recorded one video every day back in the day. Um, but then, uh, we needed some 
extra, like just in case, like if I got sick or something. So I ended up doing two videos a day. So um, I would record the new one in the morning that we would post and then a backup one that it was a little bit more like evergreen. So it was like still trendy, but it was based on like older videos that would happened and everything uh, just to kind of getting picked up on the algorithm. And then I ended up having so many of those. That's why I was able to start doing the doll series because I, I had enough that I was like, okay, well now I have time, I can do this. Um, and then that's how the, the Neds came around and that was so popular and so fun and everyone loved it. I, I'm so sad that the comments are now turned off because they really loved it. They really loved seeing these little girls that they watched live do these things as Barbies. Um, and then it got so popular that two of my really great friends now uh, became my co-workers. I didn't know them. I met them here. We were uh, a troop of six girls <laughs> who did, never knew each other, but we, we, we bonded so much over just these silly little dolls. So I had someone to help me write, uh, script it, um, and then we had someone who actually made these little, like, you know, did the set and everything. She's fantastic. Um, and we were actually going to start another doll series because it was so popular. Um, this, and also this style, like no one had done this before. And then it was so amazing that we actually had our miniature sets built for us. It was like laser um, etched or whatever. So we had wood pieces that we could switch out for the scenery. I I know I, I recorded some of the stuff. I really hope I have some pictures of like behind the scenes. Um, it truly was such an artistic piece. Like it was really great in production. Like, yeah, like, okay, fine. The videos themselves might've been silly. YouTube, you know, whatever, like just talking about, oh, don't, you know, copy my homework. I don't know. But, um, it, you know, just the, the production that was behind it was legit. It was a legitimate production. We had scripts, we had meetings about, okay, we need to do this and all that kind of stuff. Um, but unfortunately, that started coming to an end because there was some back end stuff um, where we kind of had to go back to being trendy. Uh, we took a break for a while, um, again, because it was just, you know, they were paying three salaries for one channel um, and they had uh, other channels that they were running on their own. So we took a break and then I started doing those channels directly with the girls. Um, I would come up with some content and film them and everything, um, which also was a lot of fun. It was just different because you relied on children. And so you had to do, you know, based on children, they had to go to school, you know, you couldn't work them too hard. Like they, they really did really well with their children. Unlike, you know, you, you see some of these um, family videos and stuff, family channels that they, that was not them. Um, these children were able to play with toys on their own and then they knew, okay, you sit in front of this and you do, you know, you, you do this video. So it was really fun to have that studio and it just looked like a giant toy room. It was really fun. Um, but the doll show had already been postponed once. Um, and then it was getting put on hold again and it just felt different this time. And this time we knew it wasn't coming back. And so my job was going to just be editor. Um, they also were talking about moving to Florida and I wasn't going to move to Florida. So I couldn't be, you know, a content creator through the children anymore because I wouldn't be there to help film them and, and get the toys and everything. So I would just be a video editor. And I toyed with that idea for a little bit. Um, but then there were other factors. It just was, was the time. And, uh, and so I left. And uh, my coworkers left too, so it just ended up to be the two um, original coworkers that were there when I started, and um, and that was that. A year and a half of my life. Um, it was amazing, but again, it was frustrating. Um, it was liberating, but it was so constricting. The entire time, I was so close, I could almost taste it. I remember literally saying those words. We almost got to the point where we were trying to get picked up by like Amazon 
or you know Netflix that kind of thing and actually try to have a real series I wrote a one page of this other um, story that I actually might write <laughs> as, a, as a novel um, we we were doing it we were going to go to a convention where these things got picked up um, unfortunately we couldn't go and um, the our boss didn't go to the meetings that she needed to have gone to so it never got picked up um, or we never got into those meetings um, but it there was something there and our team was so amazing and it's so weird because um, when I left it felt like a hole and again <laughs> I, I I wanted to continue doing it on my own. I was able to tell these stories in a way, you know, because I'm not an animator, um, and I didn't have, you know, it, you didn't have to worry about actors because they, you know, they don't need a break; they'll they'll be fine. Um, but it was so time consuming. I would literally spend an eight-hour day filming one episode. It 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 really was a production, and that's not something that you can do as an individual, you know, needing to work a full-time job. So, um, there were some times, I actually still have um, some, um, we went back old school. So this is what the very first thing looked like. Um, this is, <laughs> I made um, a studio for my Carrie character. And um, that was, in a poster board that's how the uh, the first dolly pop videos and stuff started um and then i had um the base was another one that um this is felt but it looks like carpet and it would be laid there um they also make like for scrapbooking you could do so it looked like wood flooring we got really creative um and that's how we did it and you know that itself cost i don't know like, I think the whole thing cost, like, maybe 50 bucks or something to do the original set, um, which, again, was the cost of one episode. So I was able to say, hey, look, you know, I know I can do this, you know, um, because we already had the Barbies from other videos. So um, that part's not the hard part. <laughs> it's the cutting it and making it look good. And so, yeah, she could always be here and I can, you know, still have my hands and stuff and it would go a lot faster and maybe, you know, going back to what I had said about it's not going to be perfect, it just felt like it was the time to let it go. Uh, I still love the name Dolly Pop, which actually wasn't even my idea. So I still kept fighting and like wanting to do that, um, but I just never really could. I did do um, finally like a monologue, which is kind of my way of letting it go. And I did do that one final Piper. I knew I was quitting. Um, no one else knew. And I was at the end of the day of filming in one particular scene and um, we already knew that the series was ending. Um, we were able to do one or two more episodes. I can't remember exactly why. It was going on hiatus, but we were like, okay, we'll have like a season finale. Uh, it never aired, that one anyway. But um, so, at the end, I did my short little one on my own phone of her that I got to save and I put on my thing of just her getting to say goodbye. I know, again, that's so stupid, but when you think about it, like an author writing a book, you know, like, you know, burn that manuscript, you know, <laughs> in front of that author and they're going to have a hard time with that. You know what I mean? Um, and most of, most of my content is gone now, you know, or at least some of the earlier stuff. I do have some, I have all the Neds are, are saved and um, I saved some of the Dolly Pop. I don't have all of them um, because they, they got taken down before I left. So I, I, I didn't, you know, I just wasn't able to save them. But, um, you know, I still have my memories and, uh, and I still have these videos, which like an hour later, we're finally getting to. Um, so I will be returning to do, um, reaction videos um to my stuff so that therefore it will be original content because it'll be my commentary um so even though these videos have all been taken down the channel has been completely renamed you're never going to see these unless someone else bootlegged them <laughs> um you're never going to see these videos anywhere else 
um, but they were originally another content uh, because I created it, but it was under um, my, my boss's channel. So, um, but because I am commentating on it, I have a workaround. So you guys get to see it and I can still protect myself. And then that was the second one. I never went back to it. I had two and one was like, you know, the legal thing. Um, but then the, the second one was, I didn't, I didn't want people to think it was a child's channel, but I also, I didn't want people to make fun of it. I wanted to kind of explain the background of it, of especially these, these are, these are princess pickles. So these are not the good content that I was talking about. <laughs> these are the fun content. This is the beginning of where it felt like rehab coming from this really serious job that was literally killing me. Um, or making me want to kill myself. And now I was able to literally play with toys for a living. Um, it was, it was amazing at that time. Uh, every time I drove to the, um, the job, I was always like, is this real? Am I like in a coma and I'm living in an alternate reality? Um, fun fact, I got this little Bubba, um, while I was still at the, um, technical place, my, uh, my Fiori had passed away, and so I got her, um, and so she was, I only had her for about two weeks. Um, I remember going and getting her, and then like shortly after quitting, and so she was a cute little puppy, and so I had to drive her to um, a day pet sitter. So she had her own pet sitter during the day while I went to work to go play with toys. It was such a weird thing, <laughs> wasn't it? You know, it was so weird. Um, but that's that story. So I know I have so many other stories about working there and, um, all of, yeah, but, um, I wanted an intro so that you would understand what's coming and I don't know when I'll be able to do those, um, because it's time consuming. <laughs> I have a lot going on in my life. Um, but I definitely want to get back to this because YouTube holds a special place in my heart. These videos at least do, you know, taste testing, craft videos, you know, whatever. Um, so I don't know, maybe I will be a story time channel if I promise not to cry every episode. That would be good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to cry next time. That's awkward for everybody. Um, but anyway, yeah, I hope you found this somewhat entertaining. If not, um, maybe you'll find my next video entertaining. So <laughs> stick around, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, stay crazy.